we're going to cover variable manufacturing overhead variances. And, and those variances are broken up into two different variances. You're going to have your overall variance, but then we're going to try to analyze it just like we did for direct materials and direct labor. We broke it down into more detail. Same thing we're going to do. Variable overhead variance will be broken down into two categories. One is called the rate and one is called efficiency. The rate variance is the difference between the actual variable manufacturing overhead cost incurred and the amount of variable manufacturing overhead expected. So to comp compute the rate variance, this is kind of like a price variance. We're looking at the actual, hour, actual hours multiplied by the actual rate minus the standard rate. And this is also called the variable overhead spending variance. We can also look at the variable overhead efficiency variance, and that's the difference between the actual amount of allocation base used and the standard allocation base allowed for the actual production volume. And so this is going to be the standard rate multiplied by the actual hours minus the standard hours. And in this case, the allocation base is the hours. So it may not always be, but I think in the homework problems, they're likely going to be that way. So here is some data that we would be looking at. The number of cases produced, 31,000. The standard variable manufacturing overhead rate is $20, $25 per hour. The standard hours required per case is 0.1 machine hours. The actual machine hours were 3,000 machine hours. And the actual variable manufacturing overhead costs, 85,200. So if you look at this from a more detailed perspective, this would result in an actual variable manufacturing overhead rate of $28.40 per machine hour. When we get that is the 85,000 manufacturing overhead cost divided by the number of machine hours, 85,200 divided by 3,000 is gonna give you the $28.40. So we run the formula actual hours, multiplied by the actual rate minus the standard rate. This is the rate variance now. This is one of two variances we're computing. The first one is the rate variance. So we run this formula, which means the actual hours, 3,000, multiplied by 2840, which is what we came up with by taking the total amount of uh, manufacturing overhead, variable manufacturing overhead costs divided by 3,000. That's $28.40 minus the $25 per machine hour, that's a standard rate. That's the formula, so the actual rate minus the standard rate. We find that difference, then we multiply that by the number of machine hours, which is 3,000. And what we get is a 10,200 unfavorable. Why is it unfavorable? Because the actual rate, the actual rate was higher than the, um, than the standard rate. Then we can compute the overhead efficiency rate using this formula, the standard rate multiplied by the actual hours minus the standard hours allowed. So the standard rate is 25. We can lock that in. We know what that is. Multiplied by the actual hours. The actual hours were 3,000 machines, machine hours minus the standard hours allowed. Well, the standard hours per machine, or actually the standard hours required per case is 0 0.10. And since we produce 31,000 cases, then that's what we're gonna compute is what is allowed. So 31,000 minus 0 0.10. So we're gonna run this computation. We're gonna subtract that from this, from, from the 3,000. And then we're gonna multiply that by the $25. That ultimately ended up being a $2,500 favorable variance. This is the way I like to do things because I like it, it's easier for me to understand or it used to be when I was learning all this. Uh, on the far left are actual numbers, on the far right are pure budgeted numbers, and in between is a combination of the two. Actual hours times the standard rate, this is still computing the same, we're just looking at the variable overhead rate variances, looked at it from a different perspective. Uh, the actual hours times the actual rate, that's the actual cost, in this case, it came out to be $85,200. The actual hours multiplied by the standard rate, so the only difference between these two are the rates, which is why we're gonna come up with the rate variance. This is 3,000 machine hours multiplied by $25. That's $75,000. The difference between these two is 10,000. Um, 
And so our actual is higher than our semi-budget, so to speak, and that makes it an unfavorable variance. We then take this actual hours times the standard rate and compare it to the pure budget of standard hours allowed times the standard rate. And we have $75,000 here. That's the same thing we had over here, but we're gonna use that same 75,000 here. And we're gonna compare it to this computation, which is the 77,500. That difference, 2,500. So this end up lower than this. So that gave us a favorable variance. When we combine these two, an uh, uh, unfavorable and favorable, we end up with an overall unfavorable $7,700. So if we would have just come up with this uh, flexible variance of $7,700 unfavorable, we would have concluded that everything was wrong, but really not everything is wrong. It appears that our rate was higher than what we expected, but our efficiency was better. So we can focus on what we can look at for purchasing rather than fo focusing too much on production. They seem to follow what was expected or actually did even better than that. We move on to fixed manufacturing overhead variances and the same thing, we're gonna break it down into two specific categories. We have the fixed, the fixed overhead budget variance. This variance is the difference between the actual fixed overhead costs incurred and the budgeted fixed costs overhead costs, okay, the budgeted fixed overhead costs. So the formula is the actual fixed manufacturing overhead minus the budgeted fixed manufacturing overhead. That's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. The fixed overhead volume variance is the difference between the budgeted fixed overhead and the standard fixed overhead costs allocated to production. So we're gonna look at the fixed, uh, budgeted fixed manufacturing overhead, which is the same thing that we had on this side and we're gonna compare that to the standard fixed manufacturing overhead and get it in further detail. That's gonna be the standard hours allowed multiplied by the standard rate. Tucson actually produced 31,000 cases with a standard hours allowed of 0.1 machine hours per case. The fixed MOH rate is $9 per direct labor hour. That, that's something new for us. We're gonna to have to mark that down. And so remember, we're looking at the volume variance. Standard fixed manufacturing overhead equals the standard hours allowed times the standard rate. So we can compute that number by taking 31,000 multiplied by 0 0.10, those are both given, times the nine, that's all given, gives us 27,900. And then we're gonna compare this, this 27,900 to the budgeted fixed manufacturing overhead which is something that will be a fixed cost that we have. So that was given as well. That's 30,000. The different, we're gonna take the difference between the budgeted fixed manufacturing overhead and the standard fixed manufacturing overhead. That is 30,000 minus the 27,900, and that gives us a $2,100 difference. It is unfavorable because the Budgeted is on the left side. We call it the budgeted, but it, but the volume variable. We were expecting it to actually be a little bit lower than it should have been. So, if you think about the left side always being the actual versus the budget, then that that makes it easier to remember. So this is an unfavorable variance. Now breaking it down into the three categories, just like we did for direct materials, direct labor. We just did the variable overhead variances, and now we're going to look at the fixed overhead variances. Um, the reason why we didn't need a further breakdown in the previous screen, because this is pretty straightforward. These are the actual, this is the budgeted. Actual was 31,025, budgeted was 30, the difference is 1,025, the actual was higher than the budget. Okay. Then the budget is going to be compared to the standard fixed overhead cost allocated to production which is the num which the 27.9, that's just what we figured out in the previous slide. So we know where that came from. The budgeted fixed uh, overhead was 30,000. The allowed is 27,900. We'll take that difference. And the left side is greater than the right, so that's also an unfavorable. These two, because they're both unfavorable, we're gonna actually add those together, and that's gonna give us a $33,125 unfavorable variance.
what we have with the fixed overhead volume variance, if production volume is greater than anticipated, then fixed overhead has been over allocated. And fixed vo overhead volume variance is, is um, favorable. So production is greater than anticipated. We produce more than what we thought based upon our standard rates. We beat them. We have a favorable variance. If production volume is less than anticipated, conversely, you would expect this to be the opposite then fixed overhead has been under allocated. And so therefore the fixed overhead volume variance is unfavorable. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go to recording standard cost drill entries. Standard costing would involve integrating standards directly into the general ledger accounting by recording inventory related costs, inventory related costs at standard costs rather than actual costs. This helps save in bookkeeping costs because we can do that a little bit more efficiently and isolates the price and the efficiency variance as soon as possible. As soon as we're recording everything, we'll see those variances. So let's go through the series of transactions and recordings. All right. Uh, in this example here, Tucson is recording the purchase of raw materials. So Tucson debits raw materials inventory for the actual quantity purchase recorded at the standard price. So the actual times the standard is what we recorded. The accounts payable is going to be for the actual purchased and the actual price. So we have to do the accounts payable at what we owe because that's what we owe. But because we use the standard versus um, we're going to debit the standard versus uh, crediting the accounts payable for the actuals, then there's going to be a difference. Potentially, it could be dead on, but if there is a variance, there will be a difference. And that difference for the purchase has to be associated with the purchase price, the purchases. That's the only thing we're not even talking about production yet, so it has to be purchased. So we can immediately see that the difference means we have to credit another account. And so if we have to credit it, then that's going to be a direct materials price variance, and that's going to be a credit. So whenever we think of credits, this is probably a little bit tough to see, but if you remember that an expense is a debit, well, that's a reduction of an expense. So that must be a favorable variance. Intuitively, that should tell you. Let's see if that makes sense. The standard price, which is what we're debiting raw materials inventory for, was $1.50. The actual price was $1.40. Therefore, we're crediting less than we're debiting, and the difference is the price variance, which is a credit, which means that's a reduction of expenses. Credit is good for expenses. Now we're going to record the use of direct materials. Tucson debits work in process inventory at the standard price times the standard quantity of direct materials. So this is pure standard. That is what's going to be going into the work in process. So we put in 155,000 pounds. Is that what we're buying? Pounds? I believe that's what we're buying. Yeah. 155,000 pounds of material are going into work in process. 155,000 pounds. We're going to multiply that by $1.50 per pound. That's the standard. So that's going to be the debit. That's what's going to go into work in process. We're going to credit raw materials inventory, 160,000 pounds, multiplied by $1.50. Since that's what we put into raw materials inventory, that's what we have to take out because it's no longer in there. You're not going to isolate a variance in there. You're going to isolate the variance elsewhere, which is what we showed earlier. Um, so we're just going to remove the total amount that was put into raw materials inventory. Now, there's a difference now. The difference has to be a direct materials quantity variance. So we're going to debit that of 7,500. Now, this is where we can actually see that, oops, we're actually debiting the, the, the variance. So that means the variance is unfavorable. We're, ha we're adding more debits, more expense to the financial statements. And let's see if that makes sense. We pulled out 160,000 pounds out of raw materials inventory. We were only supposed to pull out 155,000. Somehow some of, that, some of that difference 
some of those pounds just disappear. That's that's a, that's a loss. That's a debit. We're debiting direct materials quantity variance. Seven thousand five hundred. That's the difference between the debit and the credit. Moving on to recording the labor costs, Tucson debits work in process inventory for the standard rate times the standard hours. The company credits the wages payable for the actual hours worked and the actual wages rate. So whenever we're hitting the, the, the payables, either accounts payable or wages payable, we're always looking to put the actuals, both actuals in place, right? But in this case, we're not going to um, separate the variances. We're going to do the computations and figure out which is favorable in what area, and we're going to come up with the numbers. So all of these numbers actually relate to what we had computed before. We're just showing you how to record those journal entries. So we're going to debit work in process $1,550 or hours multiplied by $22 per hour. That is the standard rate standard rate and the standard uh, quantity. Standard rate and standard quantity is what's debited to work in process. What's credited is the actual rate and the actual uh, quantity, actual rate. So 34,100 and 34,875. Those are the debits and credits. Now we see the difference. We're figuring, okay, well, how do we come up with the variances? Well, we already did that. Shall we go back and look? Direct labor. Okay. So this is the calculation of uh, Tucson Tortilla's direct labor variances. We have a direct labor rate variance, 1875 unfavorable, and efficiency variance of 1100 favorable. Rate variance, unfavorable, 1875. Efficiency variance, favorable, $1,100. We did the computations here. Let's go and see and confirm that that's the way the journal entries are working out. Direct labor variance unfavorable is a debit, 1875. Direct labor efficient, efficiency variance was a favorable variance. That's 1100, that's a credit. We're gonna be recording the actual MOH costs. Tucson records MOH costs as usual. Variable manufacturing overhead is debited for 85,200. You can go back to 11, exhibit 11-10 11 to see where that number came from. Fixed manufacturing overhead is debited for 31,025. That's on exhibit 11-11. And the various accounts, depreciation, accounts payable, prepaids, a whole bunch of different accounts are gonna be credited for the total of 116,225. Now we're gonna be allocating overhead. Overhead allocated to work in process is the standard cost overhead rates times the standard quantity of the allocation base allowed for the actual output. So work in process is gonna be debited 105,400. Where did that come from? Well, first we're gonna figure the variable manufacturing overhead allocation. That's gonna be 31,000 machine hours multiplied by $25 per machine hour. That's going to be the 77,500 that's credited. We really need to figure the credits first. We're going to credit fixed manufacturing overhead for 3,100 machine hours multiplied by $9 per machine hour. That's 27,900. Those are our credits. We're going to add those up. That's what's going to be debited to work in process inventory. And then we're going to be recording the completion. Each case has been recorded at its standard cost of $12. As the 31,000 completed cases are transferred out of work in process into finished goods, Tucson records the following. We're gonna debit finished goods inventory, 31,000 times the $12, that's all that standard, that's $372,000. And we're gonna credit work in process, 31,000 times $12, $372,000. The final, or the next step rather, is the recording the sale and the release of inventory. Let's assume that 32,370 cases were sold on account at an average price of $20.20. This is gonna involve two journal entries. The first one is gonna record the sale. We're gonna debit accounts receivable for $653,874. Where we get that is we're gonna take the $32, 32,370 cases and multiply it by $20.20 per case. And the same amount is gonna be credited to sales revenue. That was the sale. 
The second journal entry is going to take the money out of finished goods inventory and put it into the cost of goods sold. Tucson must also record cost of goods sold and reduce its finished goods inventory. We're going to debit the cost of goods sold. We're going to multiply 32,370 units multiplied by $12 per unit. That's going to give us a $388,440. And then we're going to credit the finished goods inventory for the same amount. Now, all these are running through at standard cost because we've already taken into consideration all the standard variances. Okay, so we're going to close the MOH temporarily. We're going to close the MOH accounts. Tucson temporarily closes its MOH accounts, manufacturing overhead accounts, to variance accounts. Right now, we have a balance that's in our variable manufacturing overhead account. And that balance is a debit, a debit. And that debit is $7,700. So to close that, that balance, we've, to get rid of it, we're, we're gonna have to credit it for $7,700. Well, where does that $7,700 $7, comes from? It comes from the variances that we computed, previously computed. The variable overhead rate variance, which was unfavorable, is going to be debited for 10,200. The variable overhead efficiency variance, which is favorable, we credit for $2,500. And then we go ahead and credit the manufacturing overhead, the variable manufacturing overhead of 77. So that closes that account. What's remaining are these variance amounts that are, are now shown on, I believe they're going to be shown on the income statement. And then the Fixed manufacturing overhead account has a, let's see, it must have a debit of 3,125 balance right now. So with that debit, we've got to get rid of it. We're going to credit it for 3,125. That gets rid of it. It's gone. And then we're going to go ahead and recognize the overhead budget variance, which was a, an unfavorable of 1,025, and then a fixed overhead volume variance, of unfavorable of $2,100. Those were both unfavorable variances. That's why they are debited. So all of those price variances, or I should say all of the variances, the price, the quantity, the rate, the efficiency, the MOH rate, the efficiency, the budget variances, all of them end up as um, accounts on the income statement, but really they are a part of the cost of goods sold. So when it's all said and done, we have the sales revenue that was based upon the amounts that were sold and the dollar amounts. The cost of goods sold starts off with the standard cost, $32,370 multiplied by the $12, that's the standard cost. And then all of these variances that we recorded previously recorded in the last well, over the last few journal entries are then shown on the financial statements whether they're favorable which is a credit amount or unfavorable which is a debit amount we sum them all up it ends up that the sum of these are actually three thousand one hundred dollars and that's a debit so that's overall and unfavorable so it ended up costing us a little bit more than what we expected that was actually pretty close in terms of a percentage. And then we, we, our, our standard cost was at $388,440. Our actual was $391,540, which incorporated the unfavorable variance. And we have our gross profit, operating expenses, and finally our operating income, just like we've seen before. That's the end of chapter 11.